Welcome today to our webinar, Anatomy Physiology. This is, I will call this a study group. So uh, please, I'm going to go to some uh, remarks. Um, I'm not going to go beyond what we did in the lecture. The quiz is... Okay, so today uh, we will talk about uh, blood. And talking about the blood, we need to remember that number one is the it's a connective tissue, correct? Where is that? It's a connective tissue. Connective tissue. And is what is fluid connective tissue, right? Fluid connective tissue. How much volume we have? Volume of uh, blood is going to be between four to five liters. So that is the amount of blood that we have in our system. Okay, so one more thing here is that the a total amount of blood that you have in your body is going to be about 8%. Let's make it about 10%, right? So if you have 150 pounds, if you have 150 pounds, you will have about 50 pounds of blood. That is the actually 10% of all the all this weight. All right, so we already know that the um, that if we put all the blood cells together are going to be around the world two and a half times. So it's a lot of vessels there. All right, so let's go into our, our topic. So functions of the of the blood are going to be transportation, gas, uh, gases, nutrients, and waste, regulation, pH, etc. So gases, gases, for example, transportation, we have the carbon dioxide, and we have what? The oxygen. There are other gases I'm not going to mention right now. The nutrients, the transportation, please focus on what I'm saying, transportation, 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 nutrients. We have carbohydrates, we have proteins, and we have lipids. Waste products, what is going to transport the blood? The blood is going to transport carbon dioxide, and waste products, right? And the urea and other ones, creatinine, etc. So carbon dioxide and urea. pH. The pH is the power of power of hydrogens. We will talk in the next slide about the fluid balance. It's very important to talk about fluid balance. Please open eyes, open ears with fluid balance because that is going to uh, mostly uh, very uh, important for our next exam. Heat, regulation of the heat, we explained in class that the blood is going to regulate the temperature of the body, right? We will explain a little bit more about that. Disease, protection, why? Because the blood is going to contain the white cells are going to call, are going to be all the white cells, right? The neutrophils, you need to know these names Neutrophils, what are white cells? Neutrophils, uh, what else? Eosinophils, eosinophils, what else? Monocytes, monocytes. Please, you need to remember this very much. Basophils, basophils, because that is the base for the next two lectures. So you need to know all the names of the white cells. And we are going to mention what they are doing in a few moments. All right, so transportation of oxygen to the tissues and carbon dioxide from the tissues. You remember that we have the cell, the cell, the cell is going to need oxygen, correct? They need oxygen. Why they need oxygen? Because they need to produce the ATPs, the ATPs. When, the, when you have the Krebs cycle, remember the Krebs cycle? So the Krebs cycle need require oxygen because these are aerobic reactions that are going to produce ATPs. As a waste product is going to be what? The carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is coming out of the cell and they go to the bloodstream. So that's why oxygen to the tissues. Why we need oxygen? Because all the chemical reactions to produce ATP, they need oxygen, the majority of them. And carbon dioxide is the waste product. Remember when we was talking about the car, a car you have here exhausted, the fuel is running, and what happened? This is the energy, right? <clears throat> the fuel. The fuel is, is the energy that the car is going to burn in order to move the engine. 
right? And what you have in on behind is the exhaust with gas. So the same thing with this. Fuel are the nutrients, right? Oxygen, you need oxygen to burn the nutrients, right? The Krebs cycle, you have ATP's energy here. And what happened? The exhaust is going to release the carbon dioxide. Okay, so hormones is going to carry hormones. So in general, what you have here, that is the blood is the big highways, highways to all the uh, nutrients. So please, all the elements. Imagine uh, you have a medication, a drug, that for example, would be Tylenol. Tylenol need to be transported to the, to the tissue. Can, uh, otherwise, for example, Tylenol need to be distributed from head to toe, right? And who is doing that? The circulatory system through the blood. All right, so let's talk about the regulation of the pH. Number one, please remember the values of the pH, 735 to 745, 745 to 745. Okay, uh, how many we have so far? Uh, okay, 735 to 745. So the blood is going to be here, 735 to 745. So this is about, so it's a little bit more close to alkaline. And actually we have that below 735 means below 34 is going to be called already acid. When it's more than 745 means 46 is base, a basic or alkaline, alkaline. So everything I'm going to talk about, I'm talking very careful. Please pay attention to, to all the remarks I'm doing in this, in this uh, review. All right, so blood fluid balance. Why is the fluid balance uh, uh, make part of the blood? Why? Because the blood, blood is going to contain what? Proteins, proteins, proteins. Protein, they love water. They love water. So they are going to love water. So they got together, they get together. So proteins are going to retain the water in the vascular system. For example, here we have a vessel, we have a vessel. And here we have, let's make it like these uh, proteins, like X proteins, 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 proteins. And we have water, I'm going to make it like H water. Okay, water, 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 and water, and water. So we have proteins as an X and the uh, water inside. So what they are doing is to attract to each other. They are going to attract to each other, attract to each other. So the protein is going to make the water stay in the vascular space. What happens if you have uh, less proteins than the amount of, of molecule of water that, uh, in the uh, circulatory system? If you have more water here, water here, and more water here, a lot of water because you don't eat properly, you have low levels of proteins in your blood, you have low levels of proteins in the circulatory system. So nobody is going to hold the, the water inside the vascular or the vessel. So what happened now? The water starts to escape. Water starts to escape. Escape to the tissue. So to the tissue surround. So that's why uh, it's important for the fluid balance. Remember protein. Remember water. They're going to actually get together, okay? All right. We have the antibodies. The antibodies, we will talk about this in the next two classes. So I make a review, I, I make some uh, comments about antibodies. So we are going to skip it, just talk to mention it at this time. The only one that I want you to remember is the antibodies where it's running, it's running in the circulatory system. And what is going to do these anti antibodies to protect against infections, period. Then we have the coagulation factors. The coagulation factors, remember, are going to be produced by the liver. The liver produces coagulation factors. So, for example, we have coagulation factor, uh, the certain is not here, 13 to 12, 12 to 11, 11 to uh, 
to 10, somewhere, somewhere is 10 here, 9, 8, where is 8? Well, somewhere is 8, uh, 7, 6, 4, and 5. So the important thing is that what is going to do? All these reactions that are happening in the liver, 13 to 12, 12, 11, 10, 9, etc., are going to end in one product that is the fibrin. Fibrin, 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 fibrin. So fibrin is the result of that coagulation factors, coagulation factors, coagulation factors. We already know from the previous class, and this is open eyes, open ears again, please, that what is a clot, right? A clot is, what is the same to say thrombus. Thrombus. In Latin plural, it's going to be thrombi with I. But anyhow, so what is a clot? A clot is going to be the red blood cell plus whom? Plus the platelet, plus the platelet, plus the fibrin. And what is the fibrin? It's a product of the coagulation factors. Okay, coagulation factors. You see, all these need to happen in the liver in order to produce the fibrin. The fibrin then go uh, to the platelets plus the red blood cells that is going to form a clot. Okay, so don't forget about that, please. Okay, so here we're going to talk about the, the blood, the whole blood. Blood is not red blood cells, as we mentioned. Blood is going to be a com component. Blood, what is blood? So please write it down or memorize it. Do everything you can. Blood is plasma plus form elements. What are the four form elements? Form elements are going to be the red blood cell plus the white cell plus the platelets. So don't forget all the plasma. Plasma, 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 plasma. Okay, plasma plus form elements. So all this is together. So plasma and the form element. Then it's going to have a centrifugation that is a very high speed spinning that make the gravity uh, increase when the, the tube is under that spin. So what happened? The elements that are more heavier are going to go to the bottom of the tube. Which are these elements that are heavier and go to the bottom of the tube are going to be the red blood cells. So what is this guy? Red blood cells. So all this is red blood cell, okay? Now, uh, and why is doing the red blood cell going to the bottom? Because are the largest uh, cell and the heavier, heaviest cell and that's why they go to the bottom. In the midpoint here, we are going to have the white cells and platelets. Leukocyte, leuco means white, side cells, right? It's the same to say white cells. And here we have the platelet. Where is that? Here. How much represent that? About 1%. 1%. Okay. So in the plasma, in the plasma, open eyes again, open ears again, please, open ears, okay? So Plasma is going to be basically 50% of all the blood. Imagine the, here, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 units. So plasma is going to be one, two, three, four, five, about this and a little bit more. So these are 55% of the whole tube, of the whole blood sample. And that is, the plasma, right? So what we have in the plasma, again, what we have in the plasma. In plasma, we have basically the majority of the component is water. Please pay attention to that. What is the major component of the plasma? Water, 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 water. Water is the major component of the plasma. In addition to that, in this yellow, we have fat, we have proteins, we have carbohydrates, we have hormones, we have vitamins, we have minerals, we have electrolytes, we have everything. But what is the major component of the plasma? It's going to be the water, okay? 
All right, so again, plasma is about 55%, 55%, 55%. The platelets and the white cells, platelets and white cells are going to be around 1%. Sorry, it's 1%. Then we have on the bottom, the red blood cells, that is about 45%. So please be careful. When I ask you what is the percentage, look at here to this, what is the percentage of red blood cells from the whole blood? You can see here that is about 45%. What is the percentage of the red blood cells in blood, the percentage, of red blood cells in the whole blood is going to be 45%, 45%. So what is the percentage of the total red blood cells in blood in comparison to the whole blood? That so your blood is going to be 45% of your blood is going to be red blood cells. And how do we call that? We call this the hematocrit. 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 Okay. Hematocrit. So, what is hematocrit again? So, I'm asking the, in different direction, right? What is hematocrit is the percentage of red blood cells in the in blood, right? So, what 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 is 45 percent? How you call the 45 percent of blood in the 45 uh, percent of uh, a percentage of the blood is going to be called a hematocrit. That is the number or percentage of red blood cells that compose the uh, blood. All right, so now here we have, uh, we have the red bone marrow. Please attention here. The red bone marrow, red bone marrow is going to, I'm going to put it here, red bone marrow is going to be having three main activities, right? It's going to be the erythropoiesis, erythropoiesis. This is the white cells and this is the platelets. These erythropoiesis, white cells and platelets are going to happen in the red bone marrow. And the red bone marrow is called, this action is going to be called in general, the hematopoiesis. So please, can you see the difference between erythro and hemato? I keep repeating many times. So um, I, I'm sure that you will not make any mistake. All right, so we have the erythrocytes. Erythrocytes, please pay attention to this again. Erythrocyte is the same, is the same to say red blood cells. Technically, it's a slightly different, but a, a, well, mostly we call the red blood cells the same as erythrocytes. So erythrocytes, they have this shape. So please, this is what I want to make it clear, okay? So at the time, where is forming the red blood cells? In the red bone marrow. Through what process? The erythropoiesis. Erythropoiesis. We produce 2 million, 2 million red blood cells per second, right? So that is a lot of red blood cells per second. Now, at the time, at the time that the red blood cell, at the time of the red blood cell, when the red blood cell leave the red bone marrow, the red blood cell are going to lose the nucleus. If they lose the nucleus, so suppose the nucleus be here, this is going to have this shape, a biconcave shape, biconcave shape, biconcave, bi, what you call biconcave shape, all right? For example, you go in the highway and you see like, a, like no bump, but like a small uh, indentation like this, right? So that is concave, 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 okay? And the red blood cell is called a biconcave by Conke. Okay, so knowing that is the red blood cell by, by Conke, the red blood cells are going to have a span life of how many days? A span life of 120 days. 
120 days is the span life of the red blood cell. Is that clear? Okay. So here we have the, um, the red blood cells where they are going to die. Mostly they are going to produce what we call hemolysis. Please pay attention again. Here, open eyes again, open eyes here. The hemolysis, hemol hemolysis, hemolysis. Hemolysis means that destruction or death of the red blood cell, of the red blood cell. Okay, hemolysis. So the red blood cells are going to live only 120 days, only 120 days. And where they are going to die, especially in the spleen, in the spleen, in the spleen, in the spleen. Again, try to memorize right now, 120 days, spleen is where they are going to die and what they are going to do, what is going to happen. Okay, so we're going to make another page here. Sorry for that. We're going to Okay, so please pay attention to this. We have the red blood cell. I will try to make a better draw or something because I'm not very good at drawing. This is the red blood cell. And the red blood cell is going to contain hemoglobin. We have hemoglobin, we have hemoglobin, we have hemoglobin, we have hemoglobin, hemoglobin. Okay, so uh, now the red blood cell is going to have 100, 120 days. So who is going to call the red blood cell are going to be the spleen. So the spleen is going to collect these 120 days old red blood cells here. And what they are going to do is to destroy the red blood cell. Destroy, this is a cell membrane, destroy. Open the red blood cell and what is, what is inside? The hemoglobin. The hemoglobin is coming out and they go to the circulatory system. Circulatory system. All right, so again, hemoglobin is going to leave, the red blood cells are going to leave 120 days from these 120 days, the spleen is going to know that it's old enough, so they are going to produce the hemolysis. Hemolysis, what is doing the red blood cells is going to open the red blood cell here, for example. Okay, so open the red blood cell. The red blood cell is going to open like that, and what happened? The hemoglobin is going to be released. It's going to go out out and where they go to the circulatory system that means the blood now we have the hemoglobin hemoglobin in blood hemoglobin in blood and what happened with the hemoglobin the hemoglobin is going to turn in the blood in the blood is going to be turned into bilirubin 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 okay so Hemoglobin is changed, transformed in the circulatory system into bilirubin, okay? So when you have this bilirubin, this bilirubin, they have, they, they need to go to the liver, to the liver. And what is doing the liver? Taking the bilirubin, uh, the liver is taking the bilirubin from the bloodstream and they are going to uh, uh, the pot, they're going to send it into the bile, into the bile, in the gallbladder. So again, the red blood cells, red blood cells, they have thousands and thousands of hemoglobin molecules inside the red blood cell. They are going to live 120 days. When they die, when they are going to be 120 days, the spleen is the one who is in charge to destroy these old, old, old red blood cells. But when they destroy the old red blood cells, they are going to destroy the cell membrane and make the hemoglobin that is inside coming out, where? Into the circulatory system, in the bloodstream. And then what happened? And then what happened? The, the, the hemoglobin in blood are going to be turned into bilirubin, bilirubin, and bilirubin. And bilirubin, uh, 
is going to be captured by the by the liver, and the liver takes this bilirubin and put it into the bile. Okay, so now if let's imagine that the liver is not working. If the liver is not working, the liver cannot take the bilirubin from the blood into the bile. So what's happened with the bilirubin? Bilirubin start to increase concentrations where in blood they are going to increase concentrations in blood so this bilirubin is a yellow pigment okay that produce the skin yellow skin yellow yellow skin uh, no uh, well okay yeah skin uh, ye uh, yellow skin that is called jaundice jaundice is the yellow is a skin okay the other name is the icterisia icterisia so those two names especially jaundice is what you need to remember what is jaundice jaundice is yellow skin think about right now if you have yellow skin one of the reasons because there is many reasons one of the reasons is that the liver is not working if the liver is not working, the bilirubin, the, you know, the red blood cells, they need to die in 120 days. Nobody, nobody can stop that, right? 120 days and that's it. So 120 days, the hemoglobin is going to be released into the bloodstream and the bloodstream is turned into bilirubin. And this bilirubin, this pigment is going to take it by the liver to put it into the bile. When the liver is not working, Bilirubin cannot go into the bile. Bilirubin cannot go to the gut blood. So bilirubin, this pigment, yellow pigment, are going to be in the circulatory system, in your arteries, in your veins, the capillaries that are under your skin, in any part of your body. And that pigment is going to uh, pass into the epidermis. And that lead into what we call jaundice, jaundice. So jaundice is, is, a, is a, a sign that is telling you that the liver probably is not working. The liver is not working, okay? Any questions about that? Okay. So let's keep going. Oh, uh, okay, so somebody was asking me about the, the liver functions. Let me see if I can erase. Okay, it's going to take me forever. I'm going to do it again. Oh, there you go. Okay, so I want you to remember this. We have the liver, the liver, and the liver is going to have many functions. One, but we need to remember three, three of them. A, B, C. A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. A means that the liver produce, liver produce what? Albumin. Albumin. Second, liver produce what? bile is going to produce the bile and the liver is going to produce the coagulation factors coagulation factors so simple to remember nothing nothing difficult this is easy to remember so we have the abc albumin bile and coagulation factors what is doing the albumin open eyes very much please open eyes so this what is albumin albumin is albumin number one is a protein is the most abundant protein in our body okay Second, the albumin is going to uh, be, is going to actually uh, uh, 
uh, attract is going to attract drag like that yes attract water is going to attract water attract water attract water so that means that the water is going to be keep is going to be uh, be inside the circulatory system if you don't have the water attract uh, water in the circulatory system the water starts to escape into your tissues from the vessels are going out and that produces edema and accumulation of fluid so albumin besides other activities because albumin is the i call the taxi driver for all the elements for example if you have carbohydrates you eat carbohydrates they go to the bloodstream absorbed by the intestine who are going to transport these carbohydrates the albumin who is going to transport the lipids in the blood the uh, the albumin for example remember ldl hdl that are actually uh, carriers of cholesterol so those are proteins albumin albumin is going to carry proteins and other proteins are going to carry vitamins are going to carry in your bloodstream transport the, the drugs that you take when you are sick antibiotics uh, painkillers etc so the albumin is the taxi driver the universal taxi driver okay so now if you have the liver is not working the liver is not working the, uh, the liver cannot produce albumin so it don't produce albumin the, the the there is not enough proteins who can attract water into to keep it inside the circulatory system so what happened later on the water start to escape I'm going to start escaping outside of the blood producing what we call edemas edemas okay all right so that is about the albumin please okay so please remember albumin very much so we have the bile the bile where is the bile that we have the bilirubin that we already know where it's coming from bilirubin and the bilirubin is coming from the uh, destruction of the old 120 days red blood cells in the spleen when the bilirubin is released into the bloodstream, that uh, sorry, when the hemoglobin is released into the bloodstream, the hemoglobin is going to turn into bilirubin, and this bilirubin is going to take by the liver, by the liver, and put it into the sorry in, into the gallbladder. Well, this is gallbladder, okay? Into the gallbladder. So that is the normal thing. Again, the red blood cells are going to die. The red blood cells, 120 days, where they die in the spleen. When they die, means the cell membrane is ruptured, releasing the hemoglobin that is inside of the red blood cells. This hemoglobin circulating into the bloodstream is going to be processed and transformed into bilirubin. bilirubin. And the bilirubin is taken by the liver is taken by the liver in order to put it into the bile, into the gallbladder. Okay? Okay. So if the liver is not working, the liver is not working, you can have the, the bilirubin in the blood because of the death of the red blood cells are not going to be captured or taken by the liver to put it into the gallbladder and the bile. So what happened? Bilirubin start to increase in your bloodstream. And that is what, again, I mentioned is going to produce what we call the jaundice. Jaundice. The jaundice. It's yellow skin. We will talk more about that. There's many more things to talk about that. Not, not right now, it's not the time. All right, so we have the coagulation factors. The coagulation factors, coagulation factors we mentioned in the previous slide, the coagulation factors are going to, the one, are going to react to produce what? What we want is the fibrin, 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 fibrin. So 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So all these reactions, jumping, reaction, 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 is with a purpose to form fibrin, to form fibrin. If the fibrin is not produced by the liver, 
because the liver is failing, you cannot have clots. So please, I want you to hit your hand. If you hit your hand here, you're going to feel pain. If you hit your hand, your forearm here, people who doesn't have a good coagulation, they are going to start having bruises. But you and I, we are very well nourished. We don't have any problem with the liver. They are going to just not show any bruise, correct? Any bruise. And one of the reasons is because probably you are malnourished or the liver is failing to produce coagulation factors. Coagulation factors is the, uh, is the one who going to result into fibrin. So if you don't have fibrin, you don't have a clot. Why? Because we was talking that clot or thrombi or thrombus is equal the red blood cell plus platelets. Why is it slow? Platelets plus the fibrin. So the clot is not the clot is not going to be completed if you don't produce all if you don't have these three elements together red blood cells red blood cells red blood cells plus platelets 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 plus the fibrin 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 so that is a clot in conclusion if you have a problem with a patient with liver disease what happened with the a the a is low so what is going to happen edemas if you have the uh, the B, the B capture is going to be low, you have jaundice. If you have the coagulation factors low, you start, you start to have what? Uh, bruises. Bruises all called echemosis, echemosis. So you, you can see how useful is going to be to know these three ABC of the liver. A albumin is the the one who keep the water in in the circulatory system. A bile, if you, the liver is not working, is you're going to have jaundice. Uh, coagulation factors, you are easy to bruise. You have bruises all the time, anytime, for whatever a small mechanical compression, you start to have this bruises why because the coagulation is not going to happen i told you to hit your hand here and literally under the skin there is so tuned a small delicate capillaries that with that force that you apply over your forearm is being this is going to literally right now destroy some capillaries so these capillaries they need to stop bleeding right and for that they need the the fibrin they need the platelets and they need the red blood cells to create a clot and to stop the bleeding. Okay. All right, so let's keep going. So we have the leukocytes. Leukocytes are going to be the white cells. Leukocytes is the white cells. Neutrophils. I want you to remember about neutrophils, please. Is the first line of defense. First, first cell who deploy in the area of the of the uh, fighting the, with uh, the against infection. Neutrophils, please, they are going to produce what we call the functions is the phago, phagocytosis. Open eyes, open ears, please, phagocytosis. There is a guy here, open eyes, open ears, okay? Okay, open eyes, open ears. Phagocytes. So neutrophils are going to be called phagocytes. Other one that is called phagocyte is the monocytes. Monocytes and neutrophils. Neutrophils and monocytes. Okay. Now, is that clear? Phagocytes, neutrophils, and monocytes. Neutrophils. Oops. What's the same thing? The neutrophils, neutrophils and monocytes are phagos, phagocytes, are phagocytes, okay? Lymphocytes, there we are going to see next class, is mostly 
the way that we kill with the special forces different type of germs. Eosinophil, eosinophils are going to release histamine. The basophils too, histamine. I want you to remember that eosinophils are going to elevate open eyes, open ears, please again. Eosinophils are elevated where? When you have allergies. Allergies, eosinophils, aller allergies, allergies. So basophils are going to release histamine too that produce the vasodilation of the area that is being injured. And the vasodilation means that it's going to bring more blood and more uh, defenses, more soldiers, right? Monocytes and neutrophils are phagocytes. Neutrophils and monocytes are phagocytes. Phagocytes, who are the phagocytes? The monocytes and the neutrophils, okay? Platelets are going to be uh, a very important uh, component of the blood. Platelets, the other name of platelets is the thrombocyte. Open eyes, open ears, very wide open, please. Thrombocytes. Thrombocytes is the same to say platelets, okay? And it's not a cell. Remember, it's not a cell. It's not a cell. They are fragments. So if we have the megakaryocyte, this is the megakaryocyte, and the megakaryocyte is divided in many components. In many parts. These small pieces of the of this cell, each piece is going to form a platelet. Okay. What is hemostasia? Hemostasia means is the pre uh, prevention of the of uh, bleeding, prevention of bleeding. All right, so we'll talk about the thrombocytes again. The platelets, they are going to live about eight to 10 days, and the normal values is 150,000 to 450,000 platelets per, uh, per uh, milli, millimeter cubic, okay, or CC. All right, so that is about. So uh, if there is too high blood clots, if you have too high blood clots, that is called the thrombosis, thrombosis. What is thrombosis? Is the process to form clots. Is the, for, is the process that produce or form clots. We have the primary hemostasia. So with this almost be finished because up to here is what I explained in, in the lecture. And now I want you to uh, pay attention to what I'm going to say, okay? Please pay attention to what I'm going to say. Uh, we have thrombus, thrombus, thrombus. Oh. What I'm doing? Okay, thrombus. T H R O M B U. Thrombus is the same to say clot. Okay, clot or thrombus. Clot is so red blood cells plus platelets plus fibrin. So if you don't have these three together, that is not a clot. You need to have one, two, three elements in order to have a clot. Okay. These platelets is the primary hemostasia because it's the first thing that occur after an injury and uh, bleeding. And then we have the secondary, secondary, secondary uh, hemostasia that is the fibrin. All right, so I hope is that clear. Okay. Uh, now, let me.
feels here. I'm going to a new. Okay. All right. So we have the we have the uh, white cells, right? The white cells are going to produce by neutrophils, neutrophils, by the eosinophils, by the uh, um, uh, basophils. I'm trying to use a mnemonic, but I cannot find it. Basophil. Then we have the monocyte the monocyte, okay? Neutrophil elevation, neutrophil is going to give you, is appear in acute diseases, acute. Eosinophils increase in allergies. Basophils is going to increase in allergies too. And monocytes are going to increase only in chronic diseases chronic diseases, okay? So those are the white cells, the white cells. Remember, uh, eosinophils are going to produce allergies, okay? Allergies, allergies. Now, one thing I want to mention is about this. If we have the red blood cell here again, let's make it the red blood cell, the red blood cell. What do we have inside? A lot of hemoglobin. What is the function of hemoglobin? to capture oxygen and to carry out the carbon dioxide. Basically, is what is doing that. What is the main function or main function of the hemoglobin is to carry oxygen, 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 okay? Main function is the oxygen. How much is the span life of the red blood cell? 120 days, right? So what is the hematocrit? Hematocrit is the percentage of red blood cells in blood, right? So that is a simple description of what is hematocrit. Hematocrit, okay? Now we have um, a, the, the tube, remember the tube? And we have here the red blood cells that is representing how much? Red blood cells are going to be what? 45%. What we have here is the plasma, and plasma is 55% approximately. So the plasma is composed about 90% of water. So basically, the plasma is water. The plasma is water. Okay? The plasma is water. All right, so what else? Uh, I think that is about the review for today. If there are some any questions, yes, please let me know. I'm going to open microphones. Okay, well, let me check. Just a moment. I'm going to start.